I'm about to ruin this KN uh, substack for science. You can see the it doesn't line up too well with the uh, Venturi. I'm gonna trim it here. I'm gonna trim it to expose the air bleeds a little bit more and trim it on this side. Basically to try to match this. In this video, we're gonna try to make concept into reality. I bought this little KN stub stack and we're going to put it on the carburetor and see if it makes it flow just as much as the clay. This piece was originally designed for a choke horn. I did some contouring and cleanup uh, to try to mimic our clay job. A quick leakage check to show that we're not cheating on the test. We quickly took a detour from testing. As you can see, things weren't going exactly right. The first try of moving the knob on the flow bench, we snapped the uh, knob off the shaft and quickly learned why things weren't working the way they were. We took the back cover of the flow bench off to expose the controls and the linkage. As you can see, it's pretty simplified inside. Uh, we quickly learned why uh, there was an issue. Oh, no, it's out on the front side. Oh, uh -oh. yeah. Your set screw is not set setting. Screw came loose. All right, let me get a flat blade screwdriver. I made sure nothing was binding up. I moved the bottom air door back and forth and sprayed some WD-40 in it to try to keep it from sticking. I ended up lengthening the rod a little bit to get a little more mechanical advantage on the on the door at the bottom and uh, once we put it back together it worked like new. We did a quick baseline without the drop base and then we added the drop base on because this uh, contoured inlet is supposed to fill the gap between the drop base and the top of the carburetor. When I first put the modified stub stack on, I could hear that there was definitely a problem. The flow bench bogged way down. It recovered, but it actually flowed less than uh, without. On a carburetor with a milled choke horn, this crossbar would be sitting on top of the partition. But in my case, it could be blocking some flow. We went back to the bench to see if this Partition modification would make this a little bit better. Uh, we tried without and with, and we look at our flow numbers and realized that we were at the top end of what the bench could flow and thought to ourselves, hey, maybe we're just maxing out the bench and this is why we're getting these numbers that are the same. Cutting the crossbar out did pick up about 8 CFM. On this verification test, we commanded 5 inches of water, whereas the previous test commanded 5.5 .5 inches. And as you can see, the CFM uh, was not maxed out anymore, and with and without the inlet, we had approximately the same number. So we were a little bit confused and curious, and we got the clay back out. And right away I noticed that the way that he was contouring it was laid back much more than what the spacer was doing. And uh, from this test you could see that his clay job flowed much more than the inlet. So as you saw, the concept not equal reality. We believe the contours are, are a little bit too sharp in this piece. With the crossbar, I was down 7 CFM. I netted uh, 0 without the crossbar. The clay is about uh, plus 7 CFM. The stack mimics the profile of the top of the carburetor, so after thinking about why should it flow any different, and also laying the profile back aggressively to mimic the clay, I would have to JB weld uh, a lot more of the bottom side of the plastic. Thank you for watching this short video. A like will help 
other people see the same video. And if you want to see more, please subscribe.